at this summit that's all about executing for success. I want to spend these last few minutes talking about winning. And at the Kroc Institute, we were founded by Purdue President Meng Cheng and our other co-founder, Keith Kroc, former Under Secretary of State and also former CEO of DocuSign, with the sole mission to ensure that technology advances freedom. And we've talked a lot about that here today. Because we all know that with the technology revolution, this century stands to be the safest, freest, and most prosperous in human civilization. And the impact that that can have on our lives and our families and our country is remarkable. But we also know that our adversaries have another plan and that they want to use technology to exert more control and more of their authoritarian values to limit freedom, not just at home, but abroad and across borders. Because we know that whoever wins technologically controls globally economics, the financial system, culture, and so we have to win this fight. And our imperative is really clear when it comes to technology. And that is we have to compete and we have to win. And so there were three really key things that I heard today. And that's a benefit of, of going toward the end. I got to listen to everything and, and learn from what we discussed. But three really key things that I heard today that are necessary to winning and that I want to call out because it's fundamentally good news for the US and for all of our allies. The first is that winning requires engineering. And I don't mean microelectronic engineering. I don't mean semiconductor engineering. I mean that we have to design new processes for how we work together in order to solve big problems. We have to re-engineer how we work together across sectors, across a government, across industry, across research, across academia. And that's what tech diplomacy is. It's innovating and engineering a new way to work together across sectors and across partners and allies so that technology advances our interests and it advances our values. And so the good news is that there are new and there are proven models for how this gets done. And there's several examples that frankly many in this room have been involved in doing, including some of the founders of the Kroc Institute. Take, for example, the clean network to secure 5G. Our founders, Keith Kroc and President Meng Cheng, uh, and many of you here were involved in engineering that, and engineering a network of 60 countries, 200 telecommunications companies representing two-thirds of global GDP in order to secure 5G and make sure that the principle of trust, and we've talked a lot about trust today, but that the principle of trust was at the center of how our partners and allies decided which 5G provider to use. That was pretty remarkable. That was a global coalition of uh, governments and of companies working together to do that and ultimately stopped Huawei's master plan for 5G dominance. So that's one really great proven model for tech diplomacy and how we engineer new ways of working together. Another new model is the historic onshoring of TSMC. We've talked a lot about that today. $12 billion at the time, now we're up to 65 billion, of one of the most historic onshorings in US history. And a major feat of engineering between the leaders of TSMC, Taiwan, the United States, the State Department, and many more. Another new model that we're engineering, and when I say we, I mean the US and all of our allies, and industry as well. But another new model we're engineering and testing is chips. And we've talked about that a lot today, but a new way of catalyzing America's and allied leadership in chips from end to end so that we secure our national security and our economic prosperity. And then personally, I'm also really proud during my time at the State Department, my team and I engineered the largest restructuring at the State Department in 20 years in order to completely modernize how we execute public diplomacy in the digital age and among communications technology today. So we could advance American values and America's message and mitigate what our adversaries are doing with their propaganda and disinformation. It was talked about for 20 years and we got it done in 10 months. And so we've got to engineer new ways of working together and the really good news is there are models for getting this done and what we need to do now is do it faster, smarter, and better and do it at scale. And as Ajit was saying earlier, We've also got to do it together because there is no single country, no single company, no CEO that can do it alone. But it requires real operators executing real things and that's why it's so important we're here at a summit talking about executing for success. So that's piece number one, winning requires engineering and there's proven models of how to do it in new ways. The second requirement for winning is that winning requires education. 
And there is an awakening that is happening, there is an awakening that is needed about this new world that we're operating in. Because the truth is, it's not the same global business environment that CEOs have come up in for the past 30 years since the end of the Cold War. We have different values and different interests across our global footprint. And the truth is that China has an effort called Delete America, it's Delete A. It's documented in document 79 with the CCP to oust technology, US technology, out of their country so that they can become self-sufficient. And the truth is that to win, we need a new generation of diplomats who understand technology. We need a new generation of business leaders that understand national security. We need a new generation of innovators that understand geopolitical competition. And we need a new generation of citizen leaders who understand they play a pivotal role, not just as end users of technology, but as citizens and as customers that have the ultimate power to shape the trajectory of technology and what it means for our lives and for our nations. And all of that begins with education. And so the good news is this, in just a couple weeks, the Kroc Institute is going to be launching the world's first and only Tech Diplomacy Academy. And we're gonna educate and inform this generation and the next generation of government, business, technology, and citizen leaders on how to compete and how to lead and how to win in a contested geopolitical and technology environment. We've talked so much about workforce and upskilling today. We need to upskill in technology and in microelectronics and engineering, but we also need to upskill in how you go secure these technologies and make sure that they advance our values in our country and across the world. And that's what we're gonna be doing with the Tech Diplomacy Academy. And so my invitation to you today is this, is to join us, to join us on the Tech Diplomacy Academy. All of you here today are gonna to get a free subscription to enroll, see me afterward. But we want you and we want your organizations as a part of the Academy because we're building a movement that starts with education to bring together trusted partners and allies into a global trusted tech network. So the good news is the Tech Diplomacy Academy is coming and you're all invited to be a part of it and to start the movement. And then the third piece, finally, the third requirement for winning is that winning requires playing to win instead of playing to not lose. And Meng started the day off with a college athletic reference, and so I'll do the same. I was a gymnast at UCLA. And there's a fundamentally different approach to winning when you play to win versus play to not lose. And playing to win is defined by fearlessness, confidence, and conviction to go show the world what you're all about. And playing to not lose means every move you make is defined by fear. And when you're doing gymnastics, you can't do that. There is no room on a balance beam for timidity. And there's no room in this competition that we're in for timidity right now. And one of the things we used to say at UCLA was doing big, beautiful gymnastics. It's a mantra when you're on the beam, bars, floor, vault. And so we can't be small and we can't be timid, but this is a contest that we have to play to win. And this is the last thing, perhaps the best news of all, which is that winning requires doing what we do best innovation, enterprise, the pure grit to solve big problems with fearlessness, with confidence, with conviction, and with gusto. Our strengths of engineering and re-engineering not only technology, but how we come together as a free people and as a freedom-loving people across all corners of society. So it's time for big, beautiful innovation. It's time for a big, beautiful enterprise. It's time for big, beautiful diplomacy. And if we do that, the innovation that happens at the length of the scale of two nanometers today will actually ripple across the next 100 years to power not only our technology, but also to power the light of freedom, security, and prosperity for our children and for generations to come. Thank you.